Hey, my name is James Mulvaney. Welcome along to this video. Over the past 15 years, I've been working with radio entrepreneurs and presenters and helping them get some results. And I'm also founder of radio.co and podcast.co. In today's video, I want to answer the simple question, how do you get a job in radio? Perhaps you have been trying to get a job in radio and you've been struggling, or maybe you're just not sure where to start. Well, my guest today is Andrea Fox. She is a radio presenter and podcast host, and she also does a continuity announcement for a TV channel as well. She's had multiple jobs working for different radio stations up and down the country here in the UK. And as I say, she's also more recently been doing podcasting and TV continuities. So without further ado, let's dive into this interview where I speak to Andrea and quiz her on exactly how you can go and get a job in radio. Um, all right, so let's kick today's okay. session off. First of all, let's start with your story. Um, yeah, how do you get into radio? I know there's lots of people who are constantly, you, you just mentioned before that we came on, you know, people are messaging you saying, how do you get into radio? We have the same. We have lots of people who are really keen to break into the industry, but it's notoriously difficult. Mm. Um, so what are your kind of top tips to, to get involved in the first place? I think I was quite lucky that I was studying. So I kind of had the decided with my extra time to put the effort into getting some work experience. I know that's not necessarily a possibility for everyone. And I remember saying, people saying to me at the start of my career, oh, you're going to have to pick one. Eventually, you're going to have to be a newsreader or you're going to have to be a presenter or you're going to have to be a producer or you're going to have to just quit and do voiceovers. And that's just not true. And I think it's even more nowadays like modern day and also in 2020 with everything with COVID, you can have what is called a multi-hyphen career. You know, I don't spend mm. 100% of my time doing 100% continuity or 100% voiceovers or radio. Um, and so many jobs in the media have lots of crossover. And I think even though for people who've been in the industry for quite a while, there's lots of deregulation going on in radio, which means... There's even less opportunities. But actually, mm. if you're a local radio DJ, you've probably got an amazing contacts book. So have you thought about marketing? Have you thought about if you're good at editing, setting up a podcast company or, or approaching one whose podcasts you enjoy and saying, look, these are my skills. Mm -hmm. There's loads of different pathways that you can take. And there's low, if you look, if you're starting out, there's loads of different resources out there. BBC will have a training scheme, Bauer, Global, they all have a route in even if the old sort of route that I've necessarily and it sounds weird to call my career old because I don't feel like I've been working that long but in my working career I've had three recessions so far so in my route of like oh well I got some work experience at the local station and then I managed to like level up I suppose mm. it's not necessarily available if you don't have a local station anymore but also yeah. there's lots of there's lots of tech that means you don't necessarily mean, need to be in the TSA to work for a station if someone's say 16 years old or 17 or 18 you know they're, 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 they've just left school they're going through college there's obviously been this massive shift with a lot of local stations that were previously independent or owned by smaller groups now being swallowed up by the likes of global and bauer mainly and of course they've to sort of cost save costs etc they've tried to centralize as much of the content as possible that so that naturally means there's much less jobs in radio um, not just in pre you know presenting uh, on air on air talent, but also in other sides of things. You know the, the behind the scenes stuff, the technical stuff, even set down to sort of sales and marketing teams has all been centralised. Yeah. So, you know, if you, if you're kind of in that position, you know, you've just you just finished school, you've just finished um, college or university, is podcasting perhaps a good way to go? Because ultimately, if you're going to go down the route of, of applying for jobs in an industry, it's really about portfolio, right? Yeah, I was to I totally agree with that because I think if maybe you are at college or whatever and you're thinking the opportunities aren't there, my local station's now coming out of London, I would say have a calling card, you know. Do you when I started out, we didn't have so many possibilities and the amount of tech and mm. opportunities to just do it yourself. So can you have your own show on YouTube, your own radio show? Maybe you can mm. do your own playlists on Spotify and start that way. Have you know use Mixcloud, Soundcloud to put out your own um, shows, and especially if you want to get into journalism or talk radio or whatever it may be, you could have a podcast about music. There's loads out there. So I think if you're passionate about it, doing that is a calling card. If you're worried that oh, I'm not going to be able to get you know, weekend breakfast on my local station and, mm. you know, learn. There's loads of things out there that you can use, but just 
go for it. Just do it yourself. And actually talking about the whole deregulation stuff in in radio, like my old station that I started at became Capital Brighton, mm-hmm. which now is a bit. Was that Juice, Juice FM, was it? it was, yeah. yeah. But mm-hmm. in the old building where Juice is, they're launching a new station. So I think a lot of these places, you know, you see little – internet stations or mm. local stations that are being set up by people who do miss that or did work you used to work in the industry so then if you were like oh well i've had this podcast and you know I'm, I'm really excited to see what you do bringing back a local station you can go to them with some content with some experience to show that you're keen it's it's not easy but you have so many more opportunities i think to just make content and and get put it out there and get and learn through doing that you know let yourself make those mistakes mm. it's fine like done is better than perfect i think that's what i say about my podcasts anyway <laughs> so so actually just getting going i think there's a, again you know a lot of apprehension certainly mm. um with clients that we deal with that you know they're thinking about starting a podcast especially when it comes to maybe people who aren't that familiar with sort of talking down a microphone or presenting to camera it feels like a foreign concept that's the thing you can reiterate. It doesn't have to be perfect from the get-go. Uh, and also, if you're starting without a kind of existing audience, not there's not always going to be a huge number of people listening to the first ever few episodes. So um, I, I completely agree. It's, it's practice makes perfect. Um, Radio Today have got a great podcast. Um, David mm-hmm. Lloyd has an amazing podcast where he kind yeah. of goes back in time and listens to the things. So there's, there's plenty of podcasts out there. Yeah, Actually, listening to podcasts is a, is a great way of learning any kind of skill, I think. And particularly when it comes to audio, you know, it's an audio medium. Um, all right, Andrea. We've got a bunch of questions now, if that's okay, to go yes, through. Quite a lot, do. actually. Uh, let's kick things off. Uh, Dan Morgan says he's 16 years old and he'd love a career in radio. He's hope, hoping, hopefully depending on his GCSE results tomorrow. Fingers crossed, Dan. Um, and, mm. But he says that he would like to work his way up the ranks and become a, a radio presenter, but where to start, basically. Cool. So that is a really good one. And I'm glad that... Um, you've asked because I think you're right at the start of your career so you could do you could start off and try everything yeah and you could find out you you hate editing podcasts and you hate doing podcasts but at least you know that so I wouldn't worry about like trying something and not necessarily getting there or maybe contacting people at radio stations and not getting there yet do an hour do listen to your favorite radio station and do an hour and think okay if I was coming out that song what would I say and, and do your own little radio show. There's a great resource that my friend, my boss at Atmosphere Radio set up called Demoji, like demo and emoji together, where you can upload your audio and get feedback from proper bosses who work in radio on your presenter demo. So if you're just starting out, I think that's a really good one to think about. But obviously, yeah. it requires something from me. You've got to put some effort in and put a radio show together. But if that's what you want to be doing, like you've probably got, content now probably sitting on your laptop so you could go and have a little look at that for anyone who's maybe a little bit further on and they've got home setups there's something called voiceover hub which is how i've got um some presenting jobs and you literally upload your demo and stations all over the world who maybe need someone to voice track because someone's ill or whatever mm-hmm. um or maybe they need a specific thing for a specific chart show in a specific country um they'll go and search for you on there so that is a really good one to, to have a little think about as well. But I would also have a think about following the pe- people whose jobs you really look up to, find them on Twitter and just follow them and just engage with them and talk to them like a human being and just yeah. see, ask them. They, there might already be some content out there where they told you how they got to where they are. So yeah. that's another good thing to try. And I, just one thing on that as well, like yeah. I often get people contacting me and being like, this is what I do. Help me get a job. And I'm thinking you've just searched the hashtag of anyone who does voiceovers and presenting on the whole Mm. of LinkedIn and sent the same message, like make it personal. Like if you're following them, what is it that you really enjoy? Um, Why would you love to do their job? Why do they do it so well? And, and yeah, like you say, make sure that you find out the person who's in charge and really making the decisions when you're contacting them and also be respectful of people's time. Like there's lots of people who are trying to run a radio station from their living rooms at the moment. So one from Raphael and one from fan radio station, these kind of going to put together. So one is as a broadcaster, how do you go about competing with bigger stations? The next one is next one is with so many internet radio stations around, what can make the difference with mine um so i guess the kind of the 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 question there is you know how do you stand out as a broadcaster and how do you compete with you know what is can sometimes a crowded marketplace especially if you're you know doing a format which is really common like adult contemporary or chr etc 
I think one of the things that we've been um, trying with Atmosphere is having something that you stand for. Like we've got this Be Vocal pledge with our internet station. Look, it's a dance music station. Dance music is notoriously bad for crediting the vocalists appropriately. Yep. Um, and so we've just said, well, we're going to make sure we tell you exactly who is singing on this song. You know, they may not have been credited back in the day. Kelly Lee, um, we spoke to recently, she's not been credited on uh, recent songs that you'll know from the charts. So that's another thing, you know, like stand for something, do things right. a bit differently. I think that's one way that you can, you can stand out and yeah, something that I just recommend anyway, you know? Your I why. think that's a really interesting point as well, because, you know, if you're standing for something like, for example, like you just mentioned, you know, specifically crediting artists who maybe aren't getting mentioned uh, or, or the vocalists on a track, well, then you're going to get the vocalists on, on your side as well. So you're immediately going to build that fan base who are then yeah. going to be talking about your show or your station or your podcast that you, to, to their followers. So I think that's that's really crucial. It's, it's about maybe, you know, again, if, if you're, if you're broadcasting something specific, if you're because we have a lot of clients who maybe are, are in really specific genres, might be like country music or you know mm. hard rock or whatever, um, you know, and of course they maybe don't the, the the artists you might be playing don't have the same traction as kind of the mainstream top forty artists do. So if you're if you're really engaging with those in a specific way, um, and you know giving them credit where it's due, it will really help you kind of and we've seen clients do this really successfully we had a, a client who's in the k-pop space like korean pop. wow yeah and and some of the k-pop stars have got huge fan bases bts and they were really, army Oof, yeah don't mess yeah and and literally like they, they were absolutely killing it because they were really being specific and engaging with those artists and making sure that they were credited you know that, that's i think a advice. niche i think is a niche is great you know mm. great to be like adult contemporary but yeah pick a niche and you can see that it works because mm. we've got so many niche tv channels now we've got so many niche podcasts now we've got mm. you see um you know bauer country hits yeah it's not been around that that long when it when you if you're talking about country music so you know there is it's a smaller slice of the pie but there's an audience out there for that yeah just had someone comment actually saying that they share uh unsigned singer songwriters and the feedback has been fantastic for, for the artist so it's really yeah. really key point Do you it's really hard that? to break in if you're unsigned artist isn't it it's really mm. hard yeah, absolutely. So, you know, again, that's something you can look at doing. If you run a radio station online, you know, make sure that you've got an unsigned show once a week, you know, yeah. and, and get every, make sure that every single artist you're fe featuring is tweeting out or posting about your show, because ultimately that's kind of marketing that's going to get more eyes on your station or more ears tuned into to your show ultimately. Yeah, totally. And I think as much as I'm not, you know, I don't want to spend my life on social media, that's where people are. And I think another thing that yeah. when it comes to radio presenting, if you can train yourself up on how to edit video for social media, yeah. then maybe that is a route into working in radio because that is something that all the big groups need, you know? Um, Andrea, thank you very much uh, for your time today. It's been really a pleasure speaking to you, and I think you know we've 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 talked about some really oh, interesting it's topics. Been really too. If people want to get in touch with you or find out more about what you do, how can they find out more? Yeah, so my website is iamandreafox.co.uk. Um, you can find me on Twitter, Andrea underscore Fox, and I'm on Instagram. Hello, I am Andrea Fox. Awesome. So, yeah. All right, thank you very much. Cool. Thank you so much. Cheers. Bye. Thanks for questions. So remember to give me a thumbs up if you found that interview useful. I'd really appreciate it. And also subscribe to this channel for more awesome videos like this one. I'm always creating content, talking about the radio industry and podcasting. And also remember to subscribe to my mailing list if you're not already on board. JamesM.com is my website. I'd love to send you regular updates and lots of industry tips and tricks. Plus more great interviews like the one we just did. All right. Thanks very much for watching. Take it easy and I'll speak to you very soon.